Hey guys, today is technically it's day two of the process of the stem cell transplant. Uh, I've been in here today's Friday and I've been in here since Tuesday um, because you know, if I mentioned in the last video prepping for this process that I'd caught a cold off the little boy Theo and uh, basically when I came in here they checked me for viruses and blood tests and urine tests all that sort of stuff and they picked up that I still had a little bit of a virus when I came in here so they sort of delayed to make sure I was getting better and the virus wasn't too serious before they start this whole process it is a bit of a risk going ahead but like the head specialist said it's less of a risk doing this than continuing to wait around till the virus goes away just in case of you know tumors growing back and all that sort of stuff so day one which was yesterday so i had the first dose of chemo and then immediately struck a fever and i wasn't feeling too well so they put me straight on a course of antibiotics and did all my bloods and urines and all that stuff again uh the fever quickly went away and resolved itself after the panadol so they think that maybe I just had a reactionary thing to the first chemo. And then uh, today I had two doses of chemo this morning. Uh, it's like, like had a slight temp raise and kind of felt okay, not too bad, but I've recovered this afternoon. I've got red on my face here because I've been wearing a mask and I've been walking around the ward for an hour just to get some exercise. So that is day two. I now have to be on chemo overnight for 12 hours. There's another one tonight, so there's three in today. So I'm still feeling okay, obviously, because I'm on all the nausea drugs and all the steroids and stuff. Um, so I'm not sure when I'm going to start heading downhill, but... We'll get there and I'll keep you updated. And as always, thank you so much for all your kind words and positive feedback. And definitely helps getting through a crappy situation like this, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel for a long and healthy future once it's all complete. Thanks guys. That video was almost a year ago this coming week that I did that video and well obviously the result of a stem cell transplant speaks for itself. The reason that any further videos weren't made from that point onwards was I took a, a downward spiral basically within a couple of days after that video. I planned to try and document the whole thing but with the health state I was in it just wasn't possible. I went through the transplant, got quite sick, did transplant itself and then uh, once my immune system started to recover, I got a, like a, a syndrome. That's, that's Teddy's lunch. I got a syndrome called, um, I think it's PERS. It's where my own immune system attacked my lung, basically. I can't. I've known the name for it for so long and now that I'm doing a video, it's just completely vanished from my head. So basically my own immune system attacked my lungs in the recovery process and they basically swelled up, filled with blood, couldn't breathe. I ended up in ICU for I'm nine days. Dead. Yeah, that was dad, it wasn't well. He was like, uh, you know, what, two and a half months old at the time. So he probably wouldn't ever hopefully remember much of that wasn't able to see him obviously for nearly four or five weeks but when I got in a critical condition obviously they called Courtney and said you need to come up to the hospital because they gave me about a 15% chance of pulling through that situation and there's a few hazy days especially through the ICU period but I don't really remember much at all and it was pretty tough uh, but that was a year ago and Aside from health complications and a weak immune system, I'm sick right now and I'm just sick on and off all the time because my immune system's still recovering. So if he gets a cold, I get a cold, he gets better, I get a chest infection and the cycle continues. So this is Teddy. Say hello, say hi.
You're all camera shy. <laughs> yeah, you see yourself. You go. So he's 13 months old now, and <clears throat> obviously I made it through. And, and what happened to me was quite a rare thing to happen. So anybody that's going to go through that process of the stem cell transplant, it relatively was not that hard for a small period of time. Like if it was, all goes to plan, like it did, they were about to let me out in two days and then my immune system tried to kill me. That whole process, yeah, it sucked for like 14 days or whatever, but in comparison to the fact of having like chemo for six, seven months, if you've gone through that, then the stem cell transplant is just like that six, seven months compiled into a two-week period, basically, or three or four weeks. Anyway, I, ended up, I was in the hospital for seven weeks, really. So I had issues with my lungs, so I coughed a lot because I, co I coughed a lot. I had no platelets because they killed my platelets, obviously, the type of cancer I had. Then I, I developed like clots and hemorrhages in my eyes and retinas and I went blind for a bit. And now I still have a hemorrhage in the back of my left eye, which affects my vision now still peripherally. But I mean that and some other niggling stuff and pains and weak immune system all in all the fact that i'm alive i think i can kind of live with those things because it's pretty touch and go for a little while and as it sits at the moment courtney and i have been at home basically this whole year with him because of the covid thing which every know everybody knows about worldwide so that's happening it's happening here in australia too we were going to go on a big road trip and a holiday uh, to kind of celebrate the last year, but that didn't happen because of COVID. So this week, um, we are going away for about a month. We're going up to North Queensland from where we live, which is a beautiful tropical, like, wit, wit Sundays, Great Barrier Reef. Going camping for four weeks and coming back again. Um, so life's getting pretty good. We're getting back on our feet. I'm about, are you right there? Can you behave? Stop pulling stuff out of the cupboard. Ow! Uh, so yeah, life's pretty normal. Probably back to about 90% of the person I used to be. 90% meaning I'm cognitively good. I'm feeling relatively well. Uh, I just really haven't got it back into like heavy exercise and things like that. I'm walking a lot, do yoga every day. I'm making a lot of noise. I'm trying to do something here. Trying to do walk and yoga every day and just sort of stay healthy, really. Um, I just wanted to update everybody because I was still getting messages and comments, obviously, on my videos, which, like, what happened was I had that whole process which I had to recover from, which took a good four or five months of me. I had to, like, learn to walk again because I lost all my muscle mass in ICU and, um, you know, it was sick. Obviously, nausea and all sorts of, I was on antibiotics and different drugs and steroids for months afterwards. So then, you know, once I finally recovered from that, then the YouTube thing was kind of an afterthought. Um, not because, like, I just really had to look after myself, you know, and a lot of people were reaching out to me saying, I'm going through this too, what can you help me with this? And I just, I had to put my energy and attention into myself and not other people, as selfish as that sounds, but I hope you could understand. On top of that, uh, I accidentally locked myself out of my YouTube account and I got locked out for ages and I finally just finally just come to the time where I'm like, I need to sort that out and update people because I still have people messaging me, still have people commenting, everybody's asking how me, Courtney and Teddy are and as you can see, he's becoming a handful so I'm glad I'm starting to feel better. Um, walking around when he wants to, mostly just throwing all our appliances and all the stuff in the bin. Um, we live with Courtney's parents at the moment because we sort of moved in with them when the whole COVID thing happened to help get back on our feet and make sure we could still see family when we, when we were... Yeah, you dropped it, oh no. Don't drop it on your toe. I don't want the mixer. Thank you, ta. Good boy, do you want it back? Smile. <laughs> That's funny. So 
So I basically just wanted to update everybody on what happened. One thing of importance that I really want to point out that has helped me in the recovery process has been the mind, the mindset. I lost that through the stem cell transplant and I'll be quite honest, I was honest with this about, with, to Courtney about this as well. There's a point in that process, obviously I couldn't breathe, I was on breathing assistance and everything. And it just got to a point where I was in so much pain and it was painful to breathe that I just sort of, I had agreed with myself that it would be easier to just stop breathing. And I haven't shared that with a lot of people, shared it with a lot of people now, but I went through those moments and it was quite tough and I hope that's, you know, people understand that. And it was just like a moment of weakness through all the pain that I've been through. Um, and what I'm trying to say is, after the whole process has started to feel better, I saw the care of a psychologist, not just for myself, for Courtney and myself, because after the whole process, our relationship went to shit. She thought I was gonna die. We weren't communicating properly. Then when I started to recover, my attitude wasn't the best because I'd just been feeling shitty for like over a year and a half and I was just over it. So I had to change my attitude and change my mindset. And on top of that, change my anxiety around Am I through this? Is it going to come back? All questions that people have all the time, like especially when they've been through it, it's always something that's going to be on your mind. That's why you go for regular checkups to make sure you're all right. So I'm a year clear in remission. So, you know, hopefully touch wood, it stays that way for a long, long time. I'm going to do everything I can to make that possible. But big part of that is me letting that go as an experience, letting myself, letting myself as a cancer victim or patient go and identifying as a cancer patient rather than now identifying as a new person who has been through that and recovered from it and now I'm fine. So I highly recommend during, before treatment, if you can get time to do it, during treatment, like I, you'll see in one of my previous videos, I sought the help of a hypno, hypnotherapist to help my, get my head in the right place to go through the process. I know you're hungry, mate. I just want to finish this while I think of it. So I sought the help of a hypnotherapist through that process. You'll see I've got a video about it on my channel. And on top of that, getting help psychologically afterwards. And since I've been doing that, my my restlessness, my sleeplessness, my anxiety, my, my identifying as a cancer patient and getting onto a full recovery and feeling cognitively myself and physically myself has had so much to do with talking to a professional about what I'm going through because they talk through so many people through it and it really, really helped. So I'm just going to sign off there because this becomes difficult when you have a child. Um, you know, of course, if people comment and they ever want to see more from me in my life, that's fine. But for now, it's just a sort of an update and a check in to say that I'm fine. And if I feel the need that I have to do anything further to try and help myself or help anybody through videos, I might do that. But at the moment, I'm really just enjoying living family life with Theodore Frederick is his name. Theodore, just the name we thought of, Frederick being after his grandfather. And then obviously my last name. So, and Courtney and I also got engaged as well through the whole process uh, before the stem cell, after treatment, before the stem cell transplant. I'm not sure if I put that in any videos, but I proposed to her. If anyone wants to see a little uh, visual timeline of that whole process happening and everything I've been through, oh, no. short thoughts that I've shared. There's not a lot on there, but my Instagram is Tom underscore. Hemp Factory, H-E-M-P Factory. Oh. Tom underscore Hemp Factory on Instagram if you want to follow me and sort of check that out. And if anyone needs any help with anything, please feel free to... No, you throw the fruit off the bench. Please feel free to send me a message. Like, I don't, I don't mind sort of messaging people here and back. But if I don't get back to you or get back to you straight away, obviously life's a little bit busy and I'm trying to rebuild mine. So... I can't thank everybody enough for A, people who donated to GoFundMe in the beginning. If you're going through this process, don't be shy to ask for help. Like that's one of the biggest things. Also, don't be shy 
to know that you're sick. Oh, One yeah. of the hardest things that I had to deal with was uh, I was making sure everybody around me was all right and that wasn't uh, really... Uh, yeah, limes don't mom, taste mom, good. Mom. Mum's at work. Um, identify with the fact that you're sick. Like it took a long, it took after my stem cell transplant for someone to validate and go, but you were really, really sick. Oh no! And I really struggled to accept that. But the moment I accept that, I started to feel better, as weird as that sounds, because it was like, even when I was on that hospital gurney, getting uh, taken back and forward three times a day for CT scans, uh, and making sure my lungs weren't getting any worse. Uh, I was lying there, I couldn't move, I couldn't move, I was on breathing support, couldn't move. I just remember thinking in my head like, oh, you know, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And it wasn't until my mum came in one day and she said this is, she'd been through cancer herself and she said this is the worst thing I've ever seen anybody go through. You are really, really sick and it doesn't compare to anything like I went through with breast cancer. And that really validated for me that I was sick. I got quite upset and I was like, but it was an acceptance point for me. Like, hey, I am sick. I need to stop worrying about other people. So if you're that type of person like I am, accept that you're sick. Know that it's going to pass. You're going to have to go through it. It sucks. But at the end of the day, a lot of people survive it. So, and you know, currently at this point, I'm walking proof of that. So just ride the wave. Know that there's going to be a future. And like oh, I said, really make sure you get... Yeah, oh yeah, it's avocado. Oh. Yeah, you slap that, oh. you slap that orange. Oh. Um, just know that you're gonna, you're gonna get through it. It's gonna suck, accept that it sucks. Oh. Worry about yourself. Oh. You don't owe anybody anything while you're going through this process. You owe it to yourself to make sure that you're aware of what you're going through then you can get through it. So I'm going to sign out there. So this is going to be a half an hour video for people to watch and have to go through. But yeah, if you've got any questions, hit me up. Like I said, Instagram, you can see the engagement ring. You can see little snippets of this guy growing up and snippets of me recovering. And that's yeah. Tom, Tom underscore Hemstock. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Like I was saying, for the people who donated, the people that reached out and messaged me, the people that oh. have followed up and messaged me to make sure I'm still okay. If I've missed any of those, I'm sorry, because I got a lot. I got like, hundreds of messages, which is fantastic, but I couldn't keep up with it, especially while trying to recover. So it's just me just sort of saying thank you and saying sorry for taking so long to get onto this, but I just had to look after myself. So peace, guys. Peace from me and Teddy. We call him Teddy, like Teddy Roosevelt. For all the people watching in the area. Hey! He's very, very cute. Everybody says the cutest kids they've, they've ever seen. And we don't know if we're biased because he's our kid, but we think he's pretty damn cute too. He's very, very smart. Mm. Yeah, mmm, you are. Very beautiful. Very kind, loving and caring. And he tries to eat a lot of fruit without oh. skin it. Alright, thanks guys. Love you. Peace out. If anyone's going through this journey, it sucks. But know that there is a greater power within yourself to get through it. And like so much of how you feel is, is uh, conduct conducted by your mind. So get that in check. And I wish everybody great recoveries. And to, to whoever they are or your partners or wives or husbands or children. So thanks very much for always thinking of me and reaching out to message me. It's been fucking awesome. Love you guys.